Good morning, I'm John Thielen. Today I'm Fish Ed. We're out doing some spring rigging. A couple tips and tricks though to rigging minnows that makes a difference because I, I do believe that minnows are really the key in the spring when this water's cold. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is a few little tricks about how to how to rig minnows and, and be more successful with it. So stay right where you're at. Fish Ed's coming up. One of them deals where that fish you just come up you feel the minnow just get scared to death he was just running for his life down there and this fish hit it hard enough that i didn't even bother giving him line i just pulled back like i was saying that i i need to look at doing sometimes that'll make a big difference especially when you're rigging minnows all of a sudden just that little change in how you set the hook will matter and it did with this fish right here nice wally Look at that. Didn't have, got the brand new netting on here. I didn't even have it stretched down yet. I just kind of cradled them right in here. <laughs> Got a little bit lucky, we'll have to stretch that out. Check this fish out. Great walleye. That's what we're after today. That's what we're gonna catch. We're gonna catch a bunch of these fish coming off the spawn and we're gonna get them by rigging minnows. And rigging minnows, a little bit trickier than rigging a leech. You know, I, I tend to feel like my hook set percentage is far higher when I'm rigging a leech than rigging a minnow. There's a few tips and tricks that I can give you and stuff I've learned over the years that'll help you catch more fish like that. One of them is this. I'm using a real long snell today. And, and you know, with a leech, a lot of times when you're fishing in waters where you're in a scenario where you got zebra mussels, it can be a little bit dangerous to use that big long snell because if that leech isn't swimming, it gets down into those zebra mussels. But with a shiner minnow like I'm fishing today, I'm able to fish that big long, long leash, okay? I like to call it a leash. It's a 10 foot Lindy rig and it's, it's pre-packaged. I'm just pulling it right out of the package. But what I'm doing is making it so that that minnow has plenty of leash to swim on. And what I mean is every time I set that sinker down on the bottom, he can swim all over. He can, he can bust all over down there. And what happens a lot of times, like on that fish right there, is all of a sudden you feel that minnow get nervous. And because he's got so much leash, he can actually try to swim and get away from that fish. And that's why these fish will attack so much more aggressively. Now, if I'm just pulling a leech, I'm just pulling it. And that's where a lot of times you get the boom, boom, kind of that little, that little nip you know, that, that so, subtle bite, soft little subtle bite. With a minnow, a lot of times, the reason it's such a hard bite is because they'll chase it down because that minnow is able to swim on that leash. So that's why I use 10 foot Lindy rig. This is the 50th anniversary Lindy rig. I'm, I'm fishing the number four with the red hook today. It's got a little bead on it. It's all set to go right out of the package, fluorocarbon line, so that if you do drag through any zebra mussels, you're not gonna end up cutting the line up. Fluorocarbon so much tougher. And on top of that, fish don't see it as well. There he is, uh, just hanging on it. Got him. Man, what, what I love so much too about this time of the year is where these fish are set up. They're really easy to get. I mean, these fish right now that we're fishing for, we're sitting right now in about 14 feet of water and we're just fishing an area where these fish just got done spawning. It's a real simple deal. These are male walleyes and they're all, they're all stacked up along here because they just got done with the spawn. It's a sand bottom. You know what you want to look for at this time of the year is your hard bottom stuff. That's, that's just a 16 inch male walleye, you know. It's, and that's what you're going to get. Most of these females have bailed out of here. But the males are still sitting up in here and they're going to sit here until that water starts to warm up or until the pressure pushes them out. And right now, it's chilly. I mean, we started the morning and 30 degrees, water temp's still chilly, so fish like that one, there's no reason for them to leave. They're still in here. But all I'm doing is I'm just setting up on these brake lines, and, and a lot of times you'll find one little area where it's a little bit flatter than another. That can be really, really good. But here's the thing. Don't overestimate how deep you got a fish. A lot of times these fish, even on days like today, are sitting in shallower water than you think. I'm catching these fish out of 13, 14 feet. 
that all just moved right up in here and spawned. So it's a pretty simple deal. And, you know, you can run parallel to the shoreline and, and pretty much catch fish consistently all the way down because these fish are all just scattered out from the spawn. There he is. Isn't that crazy how that works? A minnow got nervous. More nervous he got, <laughs> the more sure that I had a fish on him. And that's what it was. This fish was just following him, chasing him, and he was running around down there. And that's that big, long leash I was talking about, though. If you have that big, long leash down there, that minnow can run around, and that fish will chase him. You can feel that minnow running. I mean, I'm fishing big shiner minnows, okay? When I'm fishing big minnows, it's pretty easy to feel them running. Yep, oh, another good eye. Come here, buddy. Got him. A little better this time with the bag starting to sag down in the net a little bit. Look at that, another great fish. Same deal though. Just cruising along. Just giving these chance, these fish a chance to chase it. Hey, one tip I want to give you. It's a big deal. When I'm hooking these shiner minnows, I see people want to hook them through the skull to make sure they don't lose them, but that's going to kill them. If you kill them, here's the deal. That shiner minnow can't run and get this walleye all tuned up. So all I'm doing is I'm going through the top lip. I don't want to go through both lips because then I'm pinning their lip shut. And once you pin their lip shut, it's harder for them to get water moving through their gills. You can keep your minnow alive a lot longer if you just go through his front lip and just go through that rubbery part. And just the top lip is actually what I'm trying to say. Because then he can open his mouth, he can exchange water through his gills, and that's going to keep that minnow alive a lot longer. So that's why I hook my minnows the way I do. Because ultimately, once I hook a minnow up, I don't want to change them because he died or because he didn't get bit or whatever the case. I it, it, Because if he didn't get bit, it's probably because he died, okay? What I want to do is I want to hook a minnow up and know that I'm going to sink that minnow down there until I get bit. And you're going to get bit if you keep that minnow alive because the whole key is having that shiner running around down there because when I go past fish on this screen, it's very seldom that I don't make them bite. And they're biting because they see that minnow racing around down there and they get all wound up and they chase them. I think half the fun of it, fishing a minnow, is feeling that minnow get a little crazy down there. And you know, when you look at what type of rod you want to be using, you got to be using something with a pretty soft tip to feel that. When you look at the, the rigging rods I'm using, I'm using a, a simple seven foot, two inch rigging rod. It's a medium light action. So here, here's the thing, there's a lot of companies that make a lot of great rods that are gonna fit that bill, but make sure that you're not getting something too heavy. If you buy a medium action rod and that tip isn't soft enough, you're not gonna feel this down there. And a lot of times when the fish comes up and hits it, he's gonna feel you as well. So that's why my rigging rods have that pretty soft tip in them. And that way I can see that minnow moving and when that fish hits it, he's not gonna feel me. Oh yeah, got him. Oh boy, feels like a pretty good fish. Wow, I got in here a little shallower. I wonder what we got here. Look at this. Is that a big walleye? Sure it is. Starting to wonder if I had a pike. But I'll tell you what we got. We got a female walleye that's hanging out in here still. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. It's a really good one. Look at this one. Oh yeah. Yep, that's an old male. That's a dynamite walleye right there. Look at that. Had a big one to your day, huh? <laughs> How cool is this? What a great day of fishing. Man, one after another today, and look at that. What an awesome fish. That's a female that hasn't bailed yet. You know, and they don't all spawn at the exact same time. Some of them might hang around a little longer than some others, but man, you know, and they might hang around a little longer eating too. I mean, there's a certain amount of fish that just have no problem being shallow. They don't all go deep the minute the spawn is over, all the big ones. A lot of them will stay put and you fish enough and you just keep going at it like we have today. And not only will you get a whole ton of fish, getting those males, sometimes you'll get lucky and pop one of those big spondo females as well. That's an awesome fish right there. That's cool. Come here, big girl, I'll get you out of here. 
there she goes.